this film uh, is a special interest to me. You know, I'm getting older in my career, and I don't want to waste my time doing anything anymore that I really don't believe in. And I think this is a film that if you help us make this film, you're going to be really proud of yourself. You know, geez, I had something to do with that. I know there's a lot of people that are watching. There's so much garbage on television now. I got cable. There's a million things, and and I go, who who made this? Why did they make it? I I think that anybody that's involved in this project is is really going to feel good about being a part of it. I'm excited to be directing you. I really am. Anybody that helps out with this is going to be you know going to be really proud. I've done a couple of things where. You know where I've helped some young kids, some, and I see it, and I'm, you know, I'm really proud that, that I helped get it made. You know? How how do you like to rehearse? Do you prefer a lot of discussion, or do you like to find it when you're there on the set? I like to kind of find it when you're there, but I'm really directors like me because I'm, you know, I've been married five times. I do whatever I'm told. You know, <laughs> I go on these jobs, and people go this, and we do it. I go, look, I'll be on time. I'll do do what I'm told. <clears throat> you know, it's somebody like you. Once I. I read what you're doing and have trust in you. You're not going to get a lot of crap from me. And, and reading this project, I realized that you know somebody really did their research and, and reached out. You know. And what really resonated with me is that the setting wasn't just window dressing, where it's like, hey, we're going to do this Native American thing. It's like it's intrinsic, and it's yeah. about him being in two worlds. And that supernatural element of it makes him confront who he is and what he's doing. I was like, "That's great," because we're all human. Like we all have these yeah, stories. I tell people, don't don't write a native story. Write you know, write about the human condition. Yeah. You know, and this this story intrigued me because you know, there's there's long histories of the sky people coming down and yes. giving gifts to indigenous people of, of of knowledge and wisdom, and they they were greeted with such love and and revered and I think in today's climate, that wouldn't be the way that these people would be be greeted. You know, and the thing that really, really got me about this is the relationship between a grandfather and a grandson. You know? Yeah, there isn't anybody yeah. out there in any culture that can't relate to an older person trying to hand down some some wisdom and some some cultural history to somebody younger, hoping that they don't make the same mis- mistakes and maybe they did or. You know, or just helping them try to to navigate into being a, a a healthier, stronger, older person. The important relationship between an older man <clears throat> and mentoring a, a younger man, <clears throat> passing that on, like the cultures that respected their elders and and knew that there was that wisdom, they were much more centered. There was much more of a connection. We were all that. We were all tribal people at one time. There's yeah. No, there's no. Wisdom to any particular race, just as some of them lost their 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 original instructions. That's right. I like the way you said that. Their original instructions is very true. One one of the elders told me one time. He said, "You want to find out about any culture, <clears throat> find out what they eat, what they find holy, and what they find funny." Like I'd love to ask, you know, like like Iraqi guys, tell me a joke. You know, <laughs> <laughs> really that's curious. great. When you're when you're acting, I, you have a background as a painter. And a yeah, and I'm an old musician. I was a studio. I played with everybody from Earl Haggard, Dad, and James. Where I just got, I, I got tired know. of being on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you play? You play guitar? Uh, no, I'm the worst world sports guitar. But I left home really young, and I didn't want to take the guitar. It was too heavy, so I took the violin. And and uh, you know, I headed towards New York when I was a kid. And and uh, the uh, truck drivers would drop you off in a cornfield somewhere in the middle of Nebraska, and the next ride might be four hours. So I'd sit and play that fiddle, and, and I, I got good. Like I'm excited to be directing you in Pale Face, and one of the things that I've been working with Bill about is like dialogues, everything, and revealing characters, everything, and and if it's not there in the page, I, I told him, you know, a movie's made three times. It's the script. It's you shooting it, and then what they do in the post process when we when we edit it and do it. But you have to have an actor's back. You've got to have it where they feel like they can throw down, and they're they're giving you their A game, but you're catching it because so many people wait, you know, and they'll they'll shoot your backside for hours and then come around for one close up when that's when you're delivering your line and what you want. And there's nothing more frustrating for an actor going, "I've been throwing down great performances for hours here, and you haven't been catching it." So it's super important how you how you create an environment where it's like, "Hey, if I throw this down, he's actually getting it." 
I've done some movies with some, you know, some really iconic. I did uh, one of Glenn Ford's last films, and you know, and, and he, did, he he took like you know 17 takes, and you know, it wasn't very good. And by the time I see it, you know, I I I suck, and he's like brilliant. I realize, oh, <laughs> they can fix this stuff. <laughs> it took it took me yeah. a long time to just relax. You know, yeah. you know, I mean. It's that's important, isn't it? Yeah. Relaxing. And you know, I do a lot of voiceover work, and it was really interesting. I had to learn to be really interesting with my voice, and it didn't matter how I looked, or you know. So that that, that really taught me how how important it was what I was saying. Why is it important to have these indie projects? And and what about this? Would you hope that somebody would want to take a look at your work in it and the work that we're doing? Well, again, you know, I'm a storyteller. I come from a long history of storytellers, and you know, Hollywood is, you know, if I have to see one more superhero, I'm going to blow my brains out, you know, and and tell a story, you know, and if you tell a story, I mean, people for years said westerns are dead, you know, no, they just weren't done very well, and then, you know, here comes, you know, Unforgiven or Yellowstone or something, and they're huge hits because they touch the human condition, <clears throat> and. That's what this piece does. And that's what I found out about, it. and it's also about you know the, you, you know we've become very compressed in our thinking. You know, I mean, this we're we live in a very small planet in the Bakersfield of one universe, and what they say is an endless amount of universes. You know, yeah. so the possibilities of what else is out there is endless. You know, and if you don't open your mind to that, you know. And again, it's like reevaluating when we do experience what's out there. How are we going to react to it? You know how you know. Yeah. And I, I, I think that there isn't any culture and any religion that doesn't understand patience and kindness, and that's what this has a lot to do with it. You know, we've kind of lost our way. And again, it's it's nothing cultural. It just has to do with with. Uh, um, Years of of uh, a different value system, you know, and right. I think that this reevaluates a lot of that. What is really important? I'll learn little tricks and I'll learn things from you. That that's the fun part of doing this. Like the hard part's finding the money and doing all that, but the 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 treat to it is meeting the people and getting to play and and create that stuff. And every time uh, I get to meet someone like you and and get mentored by them and hear stories. I just love it because it makes me better as a person, which makes me better as a director, I think. Well, I, I from talking to you now, I'm, I'm twice as excited to work with you. You know, there's well, some directors, they'll push you around just like furniture, you know, which is which is OK. It's everybody does something in their own way. Right. But, you know, I, uh, you know, I, there's some directors I really like to work with. I'm looking forward to it. You know? And there's a lot of a lot of fans of Twin Peaks still out there. It's amazing to a lot of, you know a lot, a lot of people, you know. And, and uh, David has that same thing. You know, when David started to push things, you know, people go, "Oh, nobody's going to be interested. It's too strange." You know, but it took people to a place that they'd never seen before. You know, which is really interesting. You know? You're right. We've become disconnected from the experience of being alive. Yeah. And and I think I, th I think this will touch people. You know, I mean, it's it's. Like I said, I'm I'm always looking for the story. Yeah. You know? And when yeah. when you tell the story and it's a good one, you're, you're gonna make some money. You know, a lot of these <laughs> little little films and people go, oh my God, how well how come we didn't see that? You know, they pass around the table many many times. You know, well, you're looking for something that happened before. You know, that you want to copy. You know, or you're just not paying attention.